Rodrigo's of ferry crossing, all that ended in 2011. Sefo Lamin Balde's grandfather, Mansa Cherno Balde, had attempted to construct a raft here back in the 1940s. It's a big achievement, big, big achievement from the government, and all is done by the president. Really, this bridge, before this bridge, people suffered there, especially women, when taking them to hospital, to fight them to Bansang, before they get crossing here, it's always a problem. Some even lose their life there. But now, when you come, you just pass by directly, no disturbance here. Definitely, it's a big achievement. As the Gambia prepared to celebrate 48 years of independence, whether it is in the traffic or at open markets, many people around the country are traveling to various destinations to enjoy the independence holiday. Ibrahim Abalde, GRTS. Meanwhile, students from Nasir Senior Secondary School had to cudgel their brains this weekend in a rare debate focusing on the remaining of Gambit's independence anniversary celebrations. The students took turns to speak on the significance of independence and how it has contributed towards the development of the Gambia. We have excerpts of some of the speakers. We are coming to celebrate independence. That is true. But let us put it at the back of our minds that the independence we have will only be maintained by we the youths today. The independence we have, the government have done a lot for us. But there is a point I would like to talk about. And if there is any one of us who is very vigilant about things going around us, you will notice it. The government have built I mean, the government has built a lot of schools for us. We have hospitals, we have health centers, we have electricity everywhere. But let, let us go into those things and see what are we, the Gambians, doing there. You look at the people constructing the roads. You go there, the people who, the people who are the highest, high positions are almost foreigners. To keep the ball rolling is for we to work hard and do something that you know that those previous ones have done or more than that. After living here, we can all do things that, that, that you know that it is beneficial, not to expect each and every one of us to, be, to have white collar jobs. Most of us are good to be farmers, are good to be, to in, to be engineers. Some will not even have the finance to go to the university. But on these sectors, on these uh, areas, we can be there and help in developing the country. Let's talk about development that we have gone under to under the independence of the Gambia. The computer lab is fully equipped with internet facility. Just let us take a look. When we were colonized, will we have internet facility in the urban area or provinces? No. no. But under the leadership of our own government, we are having such developments. So we, we have to say bravo to those that fought independence and we keep on celebrating such events. Let us talk about the, the good roads that are constructed. It is, it is helping in agriculture, helping in transportation, you name them. Students of Nasir Senior Secondary School there speaking about the significance of independence and the need for all hands to be on deck to develop the country. Time now to take our first break. We come back right after. Unique Solutions brings you its latest products and services powered by 4G WiMAX technology. UMAX opens up a whole world of possibilities that you've never experienced before. Connectivity with a difference, suitable for all internet users. MMAX gives you true mobility at super fast broadband speeds, full and near Hawaii, everything, everywhere, and every day. Experience super fast internet in a fresh new world, faster than you can ever imagine. Available only at Unique Solutions. For further information, call us now on 4390-424. Unique Solutions, your award-winning service provider, celebrate Gambian service excellence on a global platform. Unique Solutions, an ACE consortium member. Welcome back. Over 80 people from the Manate Hazara Shea tribe have been killed after a bomb exploded in a busy market in the town of Quetta, capital of the Rasi Balochistan province of Palestine. This is the second such attack on the mainly Shia community and the deadliest in Pakistan's history. A terrorist Sunni group called the Lakshar Jangvi group has claimed responsibility 
Meanwhile, members of the Shia community have accused the government of failing to stop the attacks, blaming Pakistan's intelligence services for conniving with the terrorist group. We have details in this report. Late yesterday afternoon, a bomb placed in a water tank on a tractor trailer exploded in a market in Quetta, the capital of Pakistan's Baluchistan province. At least 80 people were killed in the blast and nearly 200 wounded. The attack, carried out by Sunni terrorists, targeted the Shia community. It was the second deadliest attack in Pakistan's history. Shia Muslims say the government has failed to live up to its promise to protect them. It called a strike on Sunday to mourn the victims of the attack and is threatening to call new strikes unless the authorities apprehend the terrorists in the next 48 hours. The government knows exactly who is doing what and who was behind this. When the government decides to act, no one can even walk through the market carrying a kitchen knife. Twenty percent of Pakistanis are Shia Muslim. They accuse authorities of not doing enough to protect them. Sunni Muslims are now afraid that yesterday's attack will lead to reprisals. Unless we all unite, people will continue to be killed. Today, Shia Muslims died. Tomorrow, we Sunni Muslims will die. And then the next day, others will die. After yesterday's attack, the governor of the province said that security forces had failed in their task. He also said that intelligence agents either do not know who they are dealing with or are too afraid to go after the terrorists. Crowds of Libyans have taken to the streets of the capital Tripoli and other cities to celebrate the second anniversary that toppled the late President Muammar al-Gaddafi. However, with security across the country was tight with the borders of neighboring states closed for fear of pro gravi loyalists. But as we hear in this report, the country is still divided as various militias control different parts of the country and the economy and court system are in tatters. Crowds of people were honking horns. Flags were waving in the wind. Libyans took to the streets to celebrate the second anniversary of their revolution. But the party is under tight security. The borders were closed, international flights canceled, and there were checkpoints at city entrances. Authorities are worried about supporters of the former Gaddafi regime. But here, people are cheering the end of the 40-year dictatorship. We feel free. Nothing is better than this feeling of freedom. But the joy has a bittersweet taste. With the two years of freedom, the court system, the economic jumpstart, and the constitution are still works in progress. The new government is facing increasing criticism. The future is uncertain. Either we succeed in establishing a democracy with a modern state and with the participation of all its components, or we fail and head for disaster. If we can meet all of these challenges, then the future of Libya will be promising and prosperous. But also on the horizon is a lack of security hurting the country. The country is run by tribal militias, armed groups who control life and death and head state services. Disarming them is a major challenge for Libyan authorities. The crisis in Mali dominated an extraordinary summit of the censored community of Sahel and Saharan countries meeting in Chad, where they pledged over 70,000 euros to support the peace mission in Mali. In Ivory Coast, 50 supporters of former President Laurent Gbagbo have called for his release from prison in The Hague, where he is awaiting trial for alleged human rights abuses. We have more on this and other stories in this African News Roundup. An extraordinary summit of 10 African leaders met in Chad Saturday to discuss the war in Mali. The Sensad community of Sahel and Saharan countries meeting in N'Djamena launched an appeal to support Mali. They also expressed concern about the threat of terrorism. Summit leaders pledged 76,000 euros to the international peace mission in Mali. A demonstration by 50 supporters of Côte d'Ivoire's former President Laurent Gbagbo in Abidjan 
was broken up by security forces. The youth leader of Bagbo's former ruling party, the FPI, called for long Bagbo's release from prison in The Hague, where he's awaiting trial at the International Criminal Court. If he is released, the move would boost reconciliation that is essential so that Ivorians can get together